Welcome, my friends. Welcome. It is Wednesday, the first day of June 2011. We're going to be live here for the next three hours at least. And obviously there is masses of very important news and information on the geopolitical military front, on the economic front, uh, on the free speech front here in the United States uh, with Judge Ban's prayer at Texas graduation. Notice first they say they can't have a prayer officially sanctioned by the school before the football game. Then it turns into now you can't bring a Bible to school. You can't say, if you're the Val of Victorian or the Salutatorian, thank God you know, for guiding me to stay straight and strong in school. You don't talk. Now, if you want to get up there and thank Buddha, that's fine. If you want to get up there and thank Shatan, it's fine. If you want to get up there and thank the Keebler Elves, it's wonderful. If you want to get up there and thank LeBron James or uh, Barack Obama, George Bush, if you want to get up there and talk about how you like eating M&Ms, that's okay. Any speech but Christian speech. And that's where we see this discrimination. You can have menorahs up all over the country. You can have Kwanzaa Day. Uh, you can have whatever other group, but don't have a city put up any type of even Christmas tree, which really isn't even religious. It, uh, it's not Christian. <laughs> it goes back to the uh, Druids, uh, but it's more just festive. Can't have that either. Uh, you can't... Uh, have anything involved with Christmas because it's a full-on assault to attack only certain types of speech. So we're going to be talking about that some today, the latest big news on Fukushima as well. Japanese seniors volunteer for Fukushima Suicide Corps, or basically kamikazes, uh, as they're being called, the divine wind. We've also uh, got uh, reports of riots breaking out all over the U.S. at theme parks, uh, at beaches. And uh, can you imagine, uh, the, these news reports are pointing out that it's uh, a lot of disadvantaged uh, urban crowds, that's code word for black people, uh, and that this is going on. And, and I want to look at why this is going on and historically why this is happening. And um, the fact that now upwards of 50 million Americans are on food stamps, black, white, you name it, and, and, and where we're going with these dependent groups within groups and the entitlement attitude you get from uh, groups that uh, have a victimology psychology and then basically go and team up with the federal government uh, to be their protector. Uh, they're, they're not being protected. Uh, they're being uh, basically uh, turned into a group of people who have 90 plus percent illegitimacy in the home, which on average increases crime. Statistically, your chances of ending up in prison fourfold. And we wonder why we have such a large population of black folks in this country in prison. So I'm going to look at this today and talk about it because it is going on. And I'm going to discuss it because I care about all these uh, quote, ethnic groups and organizations, and people need to be honest with themselves to uh, reverse or even stop the downward spiral uh, and slide. So we're going to be discussing that as well. Big broadcast lined up for you today. And, of course, we're also going to open the phones up after I go over uh, some of this news at the bottom of the hour. You're listening to the GCN Radio Network. I'm Alex Jones, GCNlive.com, PrisonPlanet.tv. We're streaming live color video. We right are now. live. It is the first day of June 2011. We're going to have wide open phones throughout the broadcast and cover a massive amount of incredibly important news. Let me just run through the headlines here. Japan's bureaucrats dress down to save the planet. Yes, absolutely. We're going to be going over that. Florida governor signs welfare drug screen measure. CNN. I watch reports. Limousine liberals. Number of government owned limos has soared under Obama. So have government jets, even low level bureaucrats flying in absolute private splendor. No TSA for them. 
Uh, continuing, 77,000 feds paid more than governors, paid more than $200,000. Some governors paid as low as $90,000. Uh, continuing, China trying to crack down on social networks. This news is not in the top news order. I, I'm just uh, you know, going through uh, some of it here. Uh, because there's so much of it. Uh, Infowars.com with direct links to the audio of Ron Paul breaking it down. Ron Paul, we are enabling a future American dictatorship. We already have a dictatorship of the corporations that own the president and the bureaucracies that operate as dictatorships. Remember that. Continuing, uh, Texas Governor Perry's Bilderberg ace in the hole. Jim Tucker's new American Free Press dot net. Uh, report going over Rick Perry, the so-called conservative, being a globalist stooge of the one world government promoting organization. Continuing uh, with these headlines, Bertha Book soars to number six on the New York Times bestseller list, putting the issue back on the front burner. CNN reports Dr. Corsi's book. Uh, continuing uh, here with some good news, Texas moves to bring back anti-TSA groping bill. Still no word from Rick Perry, though we're watching. Uh, Rick Perry called a new special session because the session ran out in Texas. Uh, he brought back two bills, the school finance and a Medicare Medicaid reimbursement bill. Did not bring up the unanimously passed in the House anti-TSA, anti-groping bill. Uh, but now Dewhurst, lieutenant governor, who had secretly worked behind the scenes to ditch it, uh, to scuttle, to beach the bill, uh, has now come out and, and uh, asked Perry to reintroduce it uh, as part of a, a package of bills. So Rick Perry claims he's for it, but hasn't reintroduced it yet. Keep the pressure on. Also, Homeland Security deploys mind-reading hardware at airports. Now, this was first announced in 2002. And five airports at the time, according to CBS News, already have passive brain scanners, uh, MRIs in them, hitting you with high-powered radiation to pick up your brain waves. And, and I would read the CBS News report. There was one report about it. And later I'd mention it on radio shows years later, people would laugh at me. Oh, yeah, they got brain readers at the airports. Yes, they've already been testing it. Now they've announced they are going to purchase what they've been testing the last few years, these big mobile trucks. We played the Homeland Security's own press release video on it, video press release showing people at rock concerts being marched in and being brain scanned. Now, oh, this shows you're a terrorist. It's just It's just all made up. I'm going to be breaking that down. Remember, their their quackery uh, lie detector tests have been proven to be a fraud. Hundreds of thousands of innocent people uh, conservatively sent to prison with them. So now they've just got new fancy machines. It's kind of like Enron got caught, uh, what, seven, eight years ago now, uh, putting up fake computer programs, showing the energy trading going when they would march California, Texas, and other state legislators through their their control systems in Texas and California at the time, they would march Congress people through and say, "See, this is why the prices have tripled this week. You see the trading; it's all free market, all fake." Well, now they just have a fake Robbie the Robot thing with blinking lights and say, "It shows you're a light. You know, uh, put a tinfoil cap on you with a light bulb on the top, and oh, the light bulb says you're lying. Off to prison for you." <laughs> <laughs> I ought to do a skit on that. Put a tenfold hat on somebody with a light bulb. You know, uh, did you murder JFK? And they say, no, I didn't. Oh, the light bulb lit up. You you murdered JFK and have a 10-year-old in the seat. Impossible for him to kill JFK more than 40 years ago. Oh, but the computer, the computer says so. Uh, just absolute baloney. Uh, so we're going to be uh, going over... Some of that today. Also, great report out of the American Dream a website up at Infowars.com. 18 signs that life in U.S. public schools is now equivalent to life in U.S. prisons. I'm glad that folks are beginning to pick up on uh, that uh, fact, and it's becoming more and more widely uh, reported. Also, Kurt Nemo has a key report. Fed ready to print more funny money. QE3 rumors. Uh, CNBC is reporting that that is indeed what's happening. Well, they've announced. I mean, the Chinese are dumping the dollar 
quicker than you drop an old shoe. And uh, they say they're going to cut back on the issuance of, of the Federal Reserve buying its, uh, the federal government's treasury bills. But if they do that, uh, it will only make the depression that much more obvious and won't transfer more power to, to the offshore banks. So they're, they're going to continue that, as Bob Chapman, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, and many other economists have pointed out, because they don't have a choice. It gives them more power. They get first use of the money when it still has value. Then you pay for it via national debt, uh, and it makes the crash gradual which is what uh, these parasites always do. So we're going to be going over uh, those reports uh, as well. In fact, uh, here it is in CNBC. Prepare for more money printing. Investors should prepare themselves for a third round of quantitative easing, said Simon McGon, co-head of European Equities, MF Global, told CNBC uh, today. The bond market is going in one direction, which is up. Falling yields, which is telling you quite clearly the direction of economic uh, travel is downwards, downgrades. QE3, a third round of quantitative easing is coming. The bond markets are all smarter than us, and that's exactly what the bond markets are telling me. Yeah, all the insiders know they're going to continue it, uh, so that's continuing that trend. The bond market is going in one direction, which is up. What... Uh, interesting and in investing in the bond markets over the last couple of sessions is you're seeing human traders trying to step in and call this turn in the market the same way the equities have done and they have just been mowed down by the quant funds which are all about leverage all about momentum and are betting on bond prices going up that sounded kind of babbly. It's because it's a transcript of what he said. Once again, the United States will step up as the marginal buyer of bonds, which means monetizing the debt, uh, he went on to say. One big injection of cash in the bond market should take you through at least the summer session to the beginning of the fourth quarter. The cash injection will have normal inflationary knock-on impact, driving back up commodities, supporting industrial stocks, Dragging the financials up with them. I think it's about the monetary injection trade, he told CNBC. Well, of course. See, they announced a month ago that they were going to stop having quantitative easing, i.e. monetization of debt, turning up the printing presses, to put it in layman's terms. And so, along with that and margin calls, uh, the amount being raised that you have to have to be able to naked short silver or gold, that basically, with the announcement that they were going to cut back uh, on monetization of debt, which will drive down commodities, made gold and silver go down for a time. But as this new wave of QE3 hits, and we know they're already into QE3, despite the fact Bernanke said they weren't going to, uh, because it's on record that the private Federal Reserve is buying more than 70% of the new Treasury bills that are being issued as China and Europe and the Japanese and the Arabs and private investors and big mega banks run from U.S. treasuries, the Federal Reserve's going in and buying them, but that's backed up with your tax money. So understand this. We will pay interest on debt to the Federal Reserve on money they get first use of. They get the money. They give it to their member banks. At near 0%, they loan it to you at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, in some cases upwards of 70 plus percent. And then you pay interest on that via taxes. Boy, you've, <laughs> it's hard to even describe a scam that out in the open. It, it's so brazen, so naked that I, it, it beggars the mind, uh, to even be able to come to grips. Uh, with something of that magnitude. Now, I've just covered these little stacks of news here. I've got seven, eight other stacks of news. NATO extends Libya operations into September. Remember, it was going to last days, not weeks. Uh, judge bans prayer at Texas graduation. Other big free speech uh, attacks. Uh, we've got the huge news I want to spend some serious time on. World Health Organization lists cell phones as a cancer hazard. Why are they doing that now? This has been known for decades. We're going to be breaking it down. 
Also, fights break out all over the country from Massachusetts to Florida to Illinois. Beaches being closed, police being shot, crime rates exploding off the charts. I have a giant stack of news here we're going to be covering uh, coming up some in the third hour. Fights break out at Carson Beach. That's in Boston. Witnesses recall uh, frightening so be police involved shooting, CBS News. Poet gunned down in North Miami. Myrtle Beach police inundated with crime during eight hour window. That's just uh, some of the news. Uh, water parks having to be closed in Tennessee uh, as. Riots just break out all over the place, and the riots are being caught on video. So we'll, we'll, we'll be discussing what's going on behind that. Straight look at what's happened in Europe, what's happened in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the United States. It's a continuity of agenda. Cell phones under regulations, having tracker uh, surveillance chips put into them under government orders. It's done in the entire Western world, standardized. Attacks on free speech and the ways governments roll out these attacks on free speech is a shake and bake. It's like going and getting boxed uh, mix for pancakes. It's got the same ingredients. So whether you're making pancakes in New Zealand or Austin, Texas, it's done the same way. And they have global think tanks that write the prospectus, that write the codes uh, then the major corporations put the systems in place and then pass the cost on to you. My point uh, by prefacing this next article with that is all of this is systematically designed. We can look at it and see it's designed, but you can also study it and see where the social engineers have designed it. And the social engineers have also used the controlled corporate media the dramas, the sitcoms, the fiction, the nonfiction, to uh, make it a joke that uh, on these programs that if you question the system, if you question the rat maze, if you question the designers of the modern civilization that are overriding our normal human system, you're a conspiracy theorist. Questioning is a conspiracy theory. Reading Rand Corporation documents, reading UN documents, reading Council on Foreign Relations documents, being informed is bad and is crazy. And I likened it to Mike Judge's excellent film, Idiocracy, uh, where a guy is in the army, it's, it's a comedy, and uh, gets uh, put on uh, you know, a life suspension um, system. Uh, basically uh, frozen in suspended animation for 300 years, and he wakes up, and in his day, he was, uh, he was a moron. But a couple hundred years in the future, he's a genius because he's actually able to even talk in full sentences. Uh, and, 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 and people laugh at him. They think he's showing off. Uh, the, the whole future is a police state, and he gets called into court, and he tries to stand up and defend himself because his lawyer is saying that he's guilty. And he goes, wait, you're my lawyer. And so he starts trying to defend himself. And the judge says, oh, look, you think you're fancy. You think we're, uh, you're smart. Uh, we're going to lock you up. And I digress. The issue here is there is a specific rollout plan to completely ban free speech under political correctness that is now in full swing all over the Western world. It has nothing to do with being liberal, nothing to do with people's rights, nothing to do with trendiness. That's the cover story. It's about global standardization for attacks on free speech. And because Europe is five, six, seven years, depending on what country, ahead of us with this, we know what to look for here, and we can follow it on a roadmap. There are some areas of the social engineering and the dumbing down of society and the tattletale system that we in the United States are ahead of Europe on. 
And there's so many complexities. To simplify it, Europe, after World War II, all over Europe passed laws saying there is no Nazi party allowed. Because we just had a war with the Nazis. Sounded reasonable on the surface. But it set a precedent to where they could ban political organizations and groups. Now everybody can be affected. Then, okay, not just if you're a Nazi, no white supremacist organizations. People said, sounds reasonable. If you create an organization or get involved, you get arrested. Long prison sentences. Automatic go to jail. Then, well, we consider nationalistic parties, people that want sovereignty, People that want to keep their culture. That's now racist. So that's banned. Oh, you're a member of a government's parliament? You criticized Muslims firebombing things because of the Muhammad cartoons? You're going to go to jail. And those people are now in trial and going to jail. Oh, you're an American that has uh, had an alternative view of history. You fly to Germany. Germany arrests you, puts you in jail. Now, that's the point Europe's up to. Now that's all coming here. And I want to break down exactly what they're going to do and, and how this is being rolled out. And it starts with judge bans prayer at Texas graduation. Now, we've all heard that before. The principal can't pray. But now the students, this is happening nationwide, you can't thank God. To get into the way that governments end free speech, the way our government's trying to openly overturn the First Amendment. And uh, again, they're training the next generation to submit to all of this in the public schools. They are several generations into it. So I want to look at the progression of what's happened in Europe and how now it's being phased in here in our republic. They're not just violating the Fourth Amendment, they're not just violating the Tenth Amendment, the Second Amendment. There is a prosecutory war against the Bill of Rights because the Bill of Rights bars these banking usurpers from fully dominating us. Our government, our federal government has been almost completely taken over by economic subterfuge and warfare. If you look at big corporations, they routinely put spies into each other's organizations. They routinely uh, end wars. Fortune 500 are on record by having the son of one CEO or owner or chairman marry the daughter of the other organization. Humans always act the same. It's called royalty. They write the laws now. The lobbyists do. Exempting the corporations from taxes. Exempting them. They're allowed to traffic in narcotics. Launder money. Run child kidnapping rings. Dinecore Halliburton, Chicago Tribune. Don't get in trouble for this. If you got caught doing it, it's all over the news. You're the ultimate devil, and you should be. But when they do it, it's just a dirty little secret. Let's keep that quiet. My point is the magnitude of the corruption going on by these systems is staggering. Absolutely staggering and mind-blowing what they're able to do. And they've taken our government over the same way in a hostile corporate takeover. They got their beachhead in 1913 and now completely run this country. But it's all done through fraud. And any time we collectively wake up to the fraud, it could all be ended through the uh, systems the founders gave us. That's why, like a railroad track that could lead our system to freedom, they're tearing up that railroad track, and they're building their police state next to it so that there's only one way to roll, and that's down their system. They're totally rewriting, reengineering the entire society. We're very deep into this. We're in the final phases of the total takeover. And, folks, when you read their own Club of Rome, U.N. documents that we've published, republished, their Rockefeller Foundation documents, the Ted Turner quotes, uh, covered in my books, films, it, 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 it is mind-boggling how evil it is once they get control. Once they've got the grid fully in control, they're, they're finishing it up right now, it is horrible what's going to happen. Absolutely horrible. And they're going to have their politically correct police on the left and right come and arrest us. As Cass Sunstein, the White House regulations are, has written in two public policy reports. 
and uh, his organizations and uh, the groups that he's openly affiliated with, Media Matters and other George Soros groups, are openly calling for us to be arrested. They're openly calling for infiltration of our organizations uh, and our uh, imprisonment. Politico even reported on that two months ago, getting more of their secret documents. I mean, if they can get away with it, if they can sell the public on it, they're going to do it. And you need to understand that, 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 that this isn't hype, ladies and gentlemen. I do not have words to describe to you the full import of historically, sociologically, what we're in right now. I'm just mind boggled that it could have gone this far and that history is repeating itself so horribly right now with this high-tech overlay. And I'm going to cover that more later, too. Who lists cell phones as cancer hazard? They're telling you that now because so many tens of thousands of major universities and research facilities in the last, really, 30 years have come out. Before the FCC ever approved it, they had rodent studies. I'm going to do a video on this today after the show, a special report in the 70s and 80s where the rodents all developed very serious cancers. Cancers that before were extremely rare, a particular type of brain cancers, are now commonplace. And they're almost always right on the side of the brain where the person tends to hold their cell phone. I tend to hold it on my left side. Ted Kennedy got his on the side where he holds it. It's a microwave relay system so powerful, it can shoot up to 10 miles to a tower. You've got a transmitter so powerful with a microwave blurp that it's able to go 10 miles. Now, do you think that's good for your head at point blank range? Birds don't know any better than to build their roost up on those cell towers. They've even got preliminary studies on that where you can just climb up in the nest and most of the eggs don't hatch. The birds are stumbling around. They got tumors all over them. They don't know any better either because they're animals. And they introduce these. We get used to them. We get accustomed to them. We take them into our homes. They surveil us. They track us. And they soft kill us with them. And they're now coming out with this because the scourge of brain tumors is growing so fast that they're going to say, see, we told you so. And then they're going to have new government-approved uh, systems and how long you can use them. The, 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 again, it's all problem, reaction, solution. They knew full well what this was going to do. They knew that the, 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 the we love to communicate. We love to have data on us. And so they know that we're not going to be able to control ourselves. We're going to kill ourselves. Even though I'm fully aware of this, I can't help it. I'm killing myself. My dad knows it. He can't help it. He's killing himself. You can't help it. We can't help it. We let our kids be around it. We can't help it. It's who we are. Killing ourselves to live. And, and I said I'd get to the other news. It's just that I think about one little thought area, and it just opens up an entire giant panopticon of paradigms. I'm going to cover the attack on free speech here. I'm going to cover it. What are we talking about here? What are we dealing with here? What are we facing? We are facing a total takeover of our free society. And earlier, before the last break, I broke down how in Europe they started out 60 years ago saying, if you try to start a Nazi party, that's a military organization we just beat, you are going to be arrested. And then a few years later, if you start a white supremacist organization, you're going to be arrested. And then a few years later, uh, if you criticize any official history of World War II, you'll be arrested. And then they expanded it out to, what, a decade ago, BBC reporter Robin Page, host of One Man and His Dog, by the way, a liberal on most issues. He was at a rural affairs event. His show is walking around England with his dog from small town to small town, visiting pubs and churches and, you know, giving a tour. Very popular show in England, running for many years at the time. He was speaking at a rural affairs event where they're putting taxes on the farmers to shut them down, banning the fox hunt that's part of their culture. You better have a fox hunt. They'll kill all your chickens and your geese. And breed like rats, and he, he was getting up there and he said, our communities, our rural communities deserve the same rights as Muslims and homosexuals. Now, you can pull this up. BBC presenter arrested for using the word homosexual. When they arrested him, he said, it's the name. Heterosexual, homosexual, 
uh, Caucasian, Negro. You use those terms now. You, you say, hey, Caucasian, a white guy, he'll get mad. I mean, I mean, that's like calling water H2O, and you're like, you're racist against water. It's the name of it. And the name of a jade plant I have at my house is a succulent. I'm not calling it, you know, evil. The point is, they arrested him for using the word homosexual, which they now judge as inflammatory. See, this is about groups, unelected bureaucracies, just adding to list what they say is illegal. Now you can pull up BBC articles where they're approvingly reporting, oh, in Europe and England, there are, uh, per city, hundreds of police dispatched every week to coffee shops and restaurants and tea shops listening for criticism of immigrants. First, it was, it was racial slurs. If they hear you talking and they're recording you next to you, secret police. But it's okay because it's politically correct to have secret police, see? And then it can be expanded to other things. Oh, folks that don't like the, the crown, folks that don't like the euro, they may have to be arrested. That's been discussed. And they record you criticizing people from Pakistan. Well, whether you love folks from Pakistan or hate them, the point is, it's your right to sit there at a tea shop and say, man, I'm sick and tired of the open borders and all the foreigners getting on welfare here. And they also then tend to hire foreigners to then be the rulers over the people in England, in Canada, in the U.S. But I have members of parliament on to break that down. The CPS workers are mainly former Eastern Europeans who grew up under hardcore tyranny and think it's good. That's who comes and takes your kids. They can't even speak English. But again, I'm digressing with little details here. That's the problem about my thought process. I don't sit here and think about what I'm going to even say. I just give you the full spectrum of what I'm thinking about, and it's impossible through spoken word. The amount of evidence is so monumental. So, okay, going back. So, 50 years after World War II, we're now 60 years, but 50 years, 10 years ago, they would arrest you for using the word homosexual. Now they're openly saying arrest people that criticize man-made global warming. And you see Cass Sunstein here in the U.S. pushing that. And now the police are coming and raiding homes and harassing people. And members of government are calling for Lord Moncton's arrest. And they're calling for it here in the U.S. as well. We should arrest people that don't agree with us. See, so it goes from let's ban Nazi speech to now let's ban everybody's speech. And the same thing started here in the U.S. I see cases every week or two where someone takes a Bible with them in their book bag, and the teacher freaks out, takes it, throws it away, confiscates it. The kid gets thrown out of school. But wait, you could bring a Harry Potter book. You could bring a book about gardening. You could bring a book about Buddha or Islam, I'll guarantee you. Well, don't bring that Christian book because the system is going after the dominant group. If the dominant group was Islam here in the U.S., the system, the social engineers, would be going after that. They'll use whatever group they can to destroy whatever the, the dominant group is to drive a wedge. That's the social engineers. Now, here in Texas, and it's the same way nationwide, first it's don't allow a prayer by the coach at the football game or don't let the principal say a prayer because it's a government school and some folks aren't Christians. You could argue that's reasonable. But see, it's not because next, now they're telling the valedictorian and others, and this is happening all over the country, not just Texas, you will not say anything about God. We'll break it down when we come back. Now your speech is gone. So there is now a direct attack on free speech. Churches were having to pull down crosses in some areas because cities pass ordinances and say people are offended by seeing it. First, it's schools can't have them. Then it's Ten Commandments have to be taken down. Uh, then it's 200-year-old crosses on hilltops. Uh, and, and in cases you go back and look, some old farmer, you know, gave the land, you know, a hundred and something years ago. There's so many of these cases. You see them in the news all the time. To have their hilltop have a cross on it, it's given to the city, and then the city later pulls it down. But see, under political correctness, you could have any other symbol. You could have a big Buddha up there. You could have a menorah up there. But you don't have that Christian cross. We're going to break no, that down in here. And I, I know, but I just want to point this out to everybody so we consciously think about it. How many hundreds of times? I mean, in fact, probably thousands. It seems like every day I scan through talk radio or the news, I see... Uh, you know, every year at the start of school and at the end of school, but especially graduation, you hear there will be no religious talk at the commencement. The principal, any of the speakers, uh, official speakers are told you will not talk about religion. Well, 
I mean, you could have an official speaker who was, say, a NASCAR champ at a high school, if, say, their kid goes there, and come and talk about NASCAR. And I thank God for giving me the gift to be able to drive this NASCAR that well. I've actually seen NASCAR guys after winning races say that. Or uh, you now see in the NFL people getting in trouble for saying they thank God. Oh, you're not supposed to show anything. I mean, it's replete with it. You constantly hear about kids being sent home for having a Bible, but you can have any other book you want. It's selective. It's discriminatory. Because if they can bring down the biggest group, if they can target and shut up that group, then they can shut up anybody. And that's what's being done here. Now, first it's, and you've been hearing this for over a decade, oh, schools, all these ACLU lawsuits, you can't have the principal get up there and give a religious speech. And I tend to almost agree because uh, what if the principal, you know, is a part of a uh, group I don't agree with? I mean, yeah, yeah. Thomas Jefferson said, said separation of church and state in a letter. It's not in the Constitution saying you don't have the government officially setting up a religion because they always had that in Europe and wars over it saying we're Catholic, we're Protestant, we're this, we're that. We're not going to be like the Arabs killing each other over Sunni government or Shiite government. You know, we're not going to have that. But that doesn't mean that you then can't go to school and have a Bible in your bag or say a prayer at lunch. You've seen those articles of kids being kicked out of school because they say prayers at lunch. That's your First Amendment. That's Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or the press or the right of the people to peaceably assemble for a redress of grievances. Or the press. See, it's all there. It's not just... It's not just you're, you're allowed to put a crucifix in a bowl of urine and have taxpayers pay for it. That is separation of church and state. That's what, see, the government does the opposite. The government cannot build a giant cross and have you worship it. And the government can't pay, what was it, a half million dollars for a crucifix in urine. But now they've told the kids, the Val of Victoria and others, you don't talk about God or nothing. Or thank God for you getting number one grades. At NBC, San Antonio Express News, you name it. Judge bans prayer at Texas graduation. So now they've told the speakers, the Val Victorian, others. The judge says speakers cannot call on audience members to bow their heads. Now, 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 now here's the key. Join in prayer or say amen. And if you go read the full ruling, basically they can't make religious connotations in their speech. So... This is the precedent being set with our young people who will grow up thinking bowing down to government's the way to go. And the exact same system they put in in Europe and Canada. You know, preachers, you can search the term, preacher arrested for reading Bible passages in Canada. And they have told churches in the last decade, if you read passages critical of homosexuality and the whole gay lifestyle, you will be arrested. Same thing's happening in Europe. Well, folks, regardless of what your stance is on that, you should support those churches having their right to free speech. Whether you agree with them or disagree, when you take their free speech away, it's over. I mean, why do you think um, the ACLU has rightly defended the right of the Ku Klux Klan to march? It's unsavory. Most of the time, it's a bunch of feds dressed up doing it. That's come out. In the Orlando a newspaper and others, I mean, there, there's no real Klan people there. It's it's all feds to, to create racial tension. Hal Turner, the famous top Nazi, as I told you, it was an FBI operative now admitted in federal court. Side issue. The thing here is that you'd better defend their right. Like, I'm seeing cases of people now being arrested for using the N-word. I saw a case a few years ago in Utah where on record at the football game, the black folks called the uh, photographer for the newspaper and the coach and other people. You can pull up these articles. Uh, called them uh, white, you know, the the, the white insults, uh, the honky word, the cracker word. I better not say the big holy word though, the n word. And then the people called them that back. And but that's it. Police said, "Well, you're allowed to say the honky and the cracker, but you don't say the other word." Folks, this is an obsession on words. So. And then the political correctness expands to San Francisco and other cities in the U.S. where in the San Francisco case, it was Hispanic kids 
wearing American flag shirts because, quite frankly, they were sick of folks running around waving Mexican flags everywhere. They're like, hey, dude, this is America. And the school said, you will t go home. You'll turn those shirts inside out or you'll go home. You don't wear an American flag here at this school. The illegal aliens are so outraged by American flags when they see them. It's like a vampire seeing a, a cross or something, I guess. That's, I mean, that's the way they behave. That, that, that all over the country, at, at gas stations, uh, repair shops, government buildings, police stations, uh, post offices. You, you've seen it on the news. The illegals run up in, in mass and pull it down and run up Mexican flags. That's the political correctness. And the media is like, how cute, how sweet. You see... And the media is like, well, that American flag does need to be taken down. That's pretty evil. That could incite people. So, see, you go from saying, let's ban Nazi speech, to now Cass Sunstein saying, and notice Cass Sunstein in those uh, Harvard reports he put out and then reissued in the White House. Even Reuters covered this, if you're a new listener and don't believe it. And I don't blame you not believing it. It's crazy. It's over the top. He said, we want to first find people who don't believe in man-made global warming or don't believe the official 9-11 story or believe that some sunshine is good for you. These are quotes. If you say any sunshine is good, we'll fine you and then we'll condition people to accept a rest. And people say, why did he pick saying sunshine's good for you? Well, that's going after alternative health folks because they pick something that seems reasonable so they can ban it, so they can ban anything by setting the press. This third hour will be jam-packed with your phone calls and key news and information. Here is the toll-free number. Would love to hear from you on this live June 1st, Wednesday edition. 1-800-259-9231. 800-259-9231 to get you up and on the air. Again, 800-259-9231. Now, coming up towards the end of the show, and I'm going to do a special video report on this tonight that will premiere tomorrow here on air. People keep saying video report. Yes, they're all audio for radio listeners, but then an added dimension in these special video reports for PrisonPlanet.tv members. And you go up there, archives of the whole show, special podcast, uh, higher quality podcast, all my films, expanded extras. Three new interviews in the last week. Charlotte Iserby flew to Maine to interview her. Uh, Dr. Conant on the fluoride deception. Uh, the Oath Keepers with the state strike back. A bunch of other special mini documentaries. Well, they're over an hour. Actual films at PrisonPlanet.tv. So that's why I keep saying special video report for radio and TV listeners tomorrow. But I'll spend more time on it, uh, as I said, tomorrow. But today I'll get a little bit into, as we mentioned yesterday, what does it signify that the U.N., the World Health Organization lists cell phones as cancer hazard. Why now are they telling us something? You win. The sun will rise tomorrow. Huge announcement. What is happening? Well, the epidemic of brain cancers is getting so bad, they're having to come out and admit it. But the, what I'm going to be exposing is they knew this decades ago. And that's the key to understanding uh, all of this. Uh, the toll-free number, again, 800-259-9231. Also, before the hour ends, after we take a bunch of calls, uh, market strategists were on the verge of a great, great depression. CNBC, we've got it linked up on Infowars.com. It's also at GCNlive.com. Suddenly, everyone is warning about the next financial collapse. They tell you everything's fine until they're getting ready for the next collapse. And now they've started talking about the next collapse. So we're going to be... Uh, going over that, the Fed announces QE3 through their minions. Uh, we're going to be going over that uh, coming up. Right now, though, let's go to your phone calls. Richard in California, you're on the air. Welcome. Alex, it's such an honor and pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Dittos to you, brother. Uh, um, listen, uh, I called in because I've been a researcher in natural health and economics and some other very interesting areas for the last 40 years. And I just wanted to let you know that uh, this is another one of those big announcements everybody already knows. Not only is sunlight good for you, it's absolutely essential for health. And the everybody wearing dark glasses and sunscreen is exactly because of that. It's great for the drug dealers. Well, like they say, they're coming out with all these new happy pills they want to put everybody on. And literally, you just type in study shows 
uh, moderate sunlight decreases most cancers. In fact, let's just put that into a search engine. Uh, moderate sunlight reduces uh, many cancers. They know that. They know uh, they've had this for over 50 years in Sweden and Denmark and Northern Europe that they had record suicide rates. And now they did the studies in the last 50 years, but now in the last 20 years, they've put sunlight lamps in the buildings under law in the winter. Uh, they have white walls to give because the eyes are supposed to get some of that light as well. And it affects brain chemistry. Uh, and, and they know this. And Cass Sunstein comes out and says, I mean, and again, folks, I know this sounds like a lie. It's so crazy. If you just look it up, he put out two reports. He's the White House uh, regulations are that if you say sunlight is good for you, you should be arrested. He says that's a conspiracy theory. Why would they not want us to get any sunlight, Richard? Uh, well, because it has a lot of effects on the on the physical body. One is, is uh, bone density, for example. The other is the uh, resistance against cancer. And most of the enzyme reactions in the body also are connected into getting sunlight. And through the eyes is probably the most important way to get it, and that's what you're warned against. It's very similar to how people were warned that the seeds in apples were poisonous and you should never eat them because they actually contain B17. So it, it's not by mistake, and it, ultimately it has nothing to do with money, even though the drug dealers have their huge empire making billions of dollars. It's based on step-by-step -step profitable, slow, and painful human Well, I've seen the studies now where, where people are getting increased skin cancer who aren't getting sun. And, and folks, I want to explain this. If you get tons of sun, you're going to end up looking like a sailor when you're 40 or 50. You know, you see these beautiful young women who, who are sun worshipers, and they look older because of it. It doesn't matter. Your skin is the biggest organ in the body. It makes vitamin D out of the sun, the type you totally absorb. Anybody knows, and even old timers, a hundred years ago, psychologists, psychiatrists would say, if you're depressed, go out and, and, and hike on a, on a sunny day. Everybody knows depression goes up during the winter. Uh, people get more colds during the winter because you're not getting the sun. It's common sense. Sun, sun, sun. And yes, the sun will end up killing you, but you'll statistically die earlier if you don't get it. We're designed to die. Our skin's designed to burn off. It's designed to get old. The point is, it's designed like a leaf to take in the sun. We're pretty similar to plants in many ways. I appreciate your call. Okay, and trees are meant to die too. That's just how it is. But we are, folks, do you know why white people are white? Because Ice Age man lived in areas where they got less light. So the eyes are blue to absorb more light. Scientific fact. That's why cultures that are closer to the um, to the equator tend to uh, not have as well. It's it's you know like the Asian name for Europeans, round eye. Well, uh, Ice Age people are supposed to have eyes that are more open and blue to get the light. And they've got white skin to get as much of it as they can. Now, if you're in the equator and you're getting too much sun, you get melanin so that it protects you. And the melanin blocks it before it gets into the rest of your tissue. I don't want to go off into a long diatribe. Yes, sir, you're absolutely right, Richard. Good to hear from you. Jordan in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, buddies. Uh, we missed you over the Memorial Day weekend. Did you have a good Memorial Day weekend? You know, I actually did take off uh, pretty much three days, which is a rarity. Usually when I take off, it's to go do work. And it was it was wonderful to take off and relax and, uh, you know, read my three-year-old 30, 40 books a day. Uh, so it was it was really fun to just uh, run around in the yard and uh, hang out with the kids. Well, you deserve it, Alex. But I was like having Alex Jones with all the like, ah. But anyway, I wanted to get to a point, as I was telling you, is a... Uh, when you went and protested last week at uh, at Austin, I wish I could have gone, but here in the Metroplex I can't. Uh, but I'm doing my own thing, just going around to uh, all my state representatives and handing them out your uh, uh, five essential DVDs. I'm making like several copies of them, and giving to them, and I'm uh, printing out copies of the uh, ten facts that prove the the law in favor of the contrived hoax. I'm giving that to all my senators as well, uh, so they can get that. Also, a funny story is a few weeks ago I was at the store, and there was this kid, young man, selling a clean energy. And so I was talking to him. I said, so what's your clean energy you're selling? He said, well, uh, stuff as opposed to coal energy. I said, because that's bad. I said, why is it bad? He said, because it produces carbon dioxide. 
I said, and what do we exhale? And he looked at me from it like he hadn't been asked that question before. He said, carbon dioxide. And then, he said, and then I said, which plants? And he said, absorb. I said, so how is uh, the cold energy bad? And he said, uh, well, it's, of course, he kind of stumbled. I said, tell you what, I'll give you a DVD. So I gave him the Obama deception. But uh, that's pretty much that. That's what I've been doing anyway. That's awesome. And, and, you know, they turn us into mercenaries. They set up an economy with all the government grants and tax incentives where even if you don't believe, uh, you know, in all this quack stuff they're pushing, you get into it because that's the only economy that's there. Just like you go to the universities, it's law enforcement, uh, it's environmental assessment. You know, it's all these busybody minder jobs. And then that's the only scholarships you can get. Jordan, good to hear from you. Tony in Missouri, you're on the air. Uh, short time listener, uh, but I uh, just wanted to let you know that I just got the poison in the tap water t-shirt. And uh, we definitely need to start waking people up here more in the Missouri region. I haven't heard much callers from Missouri. And I'm just uh, very scared, and I just wanted to give my gratitude to you. And we're going down fighting. Thank you. Well, thank you. But, Tony, don't be scared. Be glad that you now know about what's happening in the world and take action and educate folks. Speaking of fluoride, in major cities all over the U.S., Canada, and Europe, and a lot of small towns as well, Lago Vista a month ago outside Austin, uh, are removing fluoride from their water systems. Calgary just did it. And it's because doctors and scientists go to them and show them the facts. The EPA has been forced now to say that they're going to cut the amount of fluoride put in tap water by half and that children under five shouldn't brush with fluoride and that it, and that fluoride needs to be banned in, in use as a pesticide. Yes, you heard me right. Fluoride is one of the most common pesticides you use for rats, roaches, but also for spraying on crops. They have a liquid version. They spray on crops. You add it to your uh, irrigation system. It has to be topically sprayed. When you're driving through the country and you see those big giant wheels and big long uh, sprayers that 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 roll across entire giant fields, they can add fluoride to that and it sprays and kills the bugs. You spray that on a bug, it kills them. Now you're going to drink that. And then they also have a gas, a, a, a fluoride gas that they gas uh, in those big silos you see in the country where all the farmers come and you know weigh their rice, weigh their wheat, weigh their corn. Way their soybeans, whatever, you know, right by the railroad tracks. See those giant silos. They weigh it. They dump it. The co-op person pays them for their crop. And then a train pulls up and picks it up. Okay? And then it gets shipped off to the factories that are, you know, uh, producing the produced food. Uh, the processed food. Now, what do you think is going on inside all of those grain silos? Many of which are 100 years old. There's rats, there's weevils, there's everything else you can imagine. How do they, when the train starts coming into town, you know, they know when the pickup's coming, how do they knock them out? They nerve gas them with fluoride gas. Well, it turns out massive residue then precipitates out into what you're eating. The cell phone's giving you brain cancer, duh. The war expanding in Libya and the government lying about it, duh. MSNBC reporting we're on the verge of a great, great depression. Duh. Been in a depression for a while. Could have reversed it. Now, a lot harder to do, but it does give the central banks more power, so they love it. Duh. Duh, not winning. <laughs> Ever heard that joke before? Winning. I wonder where that started. I wonder who coined that. I wonder what radio show that started on. I wonder. That, I bet it's a weirdo, whoever it is. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Joe in Pennsylvania. Joe, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, Alex. How you doing? Hey, buddy. Uh, yeah, you're a weirdo, but you're a good weirdo. Um, I'm outside poisoning myself with the sun, and uh, oh, no. I got some good. Yeah, I'm not, I figured I'd go out and get some poison. Um, but anyway, uh, a couple of pieces of information. Um, number one, I ran into a group of like 21 year olds, and I was talking to them. And one of them was ex-military, and he's going on about operations and projects that he knew about. And I started talking to him, and make a long story short, just with the information, uh, and then no credit, no no glory to me or anybody, just information I found through listening to your show and other sources. 
he was blown away, and he called his friends, and they all came over. And uh, again, making a long story short, we're going to have a little powwow here, and I think I'm going to get him started out with uh, the uh, the Jason Burmis video there, um, the first one he made. Invisible uh, Empire change. or loose, loose Change? Yeah, no, loose, loose Change is good, but Burmis's first film he made on his own while well, working with Aaron uh, was uh, Fabled Enemies. Yeah, and also. Um, uh, I, I was listening to you talk yesterday, and you mentioned cell phones today, and you, you can verify this for yourself. Um, I had a cell phone years ago, and I was waiting for my plan to expire so I could upgrade to uh, Bluetooth. And when I went in, because I'm aware of the cell phone and the the tumors, and I always use speakerphone, but uh, I wanted to upgrade to Bluetooth because I can't hold the phone for long. And I asked him outright if the same cellular technology that's used to power the cell phone is in those Bluetooth headsets. He said yes. And I'm like, so I can get cancer from this Bluetooth headset just as easy. And he said, yeah. And I you know, from my said, research, depending on which Bluetooth type, I believe the guy was ignorant. Uh, they generally use a little uh, radio transmission link, at least in the, some of the units I've had, because I've looked it up. I know there are some that might use a microwave relay but those are more expensive they always like to use whatever's cheaper uh, i know they say one of the safest things to use is a wire down to it but then other studies show that can be a conduit for the microwave radiation to go up it so it's six one way half a dozen the other cell phones are mooey dangerous mooey bad they're a microwave a powerful microwave communicator and they're shooting a signal upwards of 10 miles uh, no kidding. Uh, and, and, and again, folks, there are thousands of studies. They knew this back in the 70s. They knew it in the 60s. Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. You know, this is, I, I didn't know. I figured you were doing your own homework, but information's free and people can eat the meat and spit out the bones. And, and, uh, you know, I just, I won't, I won't even put one near my head. I just, I'm, call me paranoid or crazy, but, um, if, uh, you know, it's, it's just out there. I heard you say it. I didn't know if you knew. Well, so. No, no, you're absolutely right. And the way engineers have described it to me is it's like, well, well, I've seen the math on it. Let's say you see a UHF, VHF TV tower or AM, FM tower. Whatever the antenna is, and with AM, that'll be the whole tower generally. Uh, it, it has its maximum RF effect for the length of the tower. And then every time you go out that distance, it loses half its strength as a general rule of thumb. And so if you got a cell phone in your lap, it's radiating your thighs, your genitals, your, your organs, your skin. And it does go in, especially the microwave systems, the newer ones that have gone in the last decade or so, and it vibrates DNA at the exact proper frequency to break up DNA strands. Just like a microwave, how does a microwave, you throw a piece of pizza in from last night, boom, into the microwave, you hit 30 seconds, boom. You step back, 30 seconds later, it's molten cheese. How does that work? How does that happen? Well, the microwaves go into the molecules and cause them to jump around, to move, and it rubs them against each other, causing friction. Well, what do you think a microwave does year after year up against your head? Uh, you can pull it up. Uh, the average cell phone, they're all, they vary. Within 15 minutes, a, a cell phone against the head raises the brain tissue on the other side of the skull by one degree. It's so powerful, it's actually cooking your brain. Well, if you ain't seen nothing yet, we are intensifying our fight against the globalist. I'm getting more researchers, more video editors. We're ready to launch the new TV show. Uh, for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers, five days a week for development uh, and, 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 and shopping for different cable and TV networks. Uh, you notice Glenn Beck's now going to our model, leaving Mainline TV and starting his own Internet channel and subscriber channel. We That's been my plan for five years. I'm finally to that point. Now I've just got to have the additional crew members to be able to pull it off. Uh, we're expanding now with new stuff every day at PrisonPlanet.tv. New reports. Just in the last week, uh, we have uh, the new uh, 
mini film, well, it's over an hour, The Secret History of Western Education, The Scientific Destruction of Minds. That's up at PrisonPlanet.tv. Deadly Fluoride Hoax on the Run with Dr. Paul Conant and Alex Jones. Uh, and coming tomorrow, and let me tell you, uh, Rob Jacobson has spent four months off and on, part-time, but more than four months, actually, editing this and getting every quote and every document. And, and every, I mean, you want proof of their plan to exterminate, their plan for world government, how they're poisoning the food, water, and air? Coming tomorrow to PrisonPlanet.tv, Webster Tarpley and the Elite's Plan for Global Extermination. So this is updated end game. And I mean it will it, it is it is absolute proof in their own words across the spectrum. UN, John P. Holdren, Club of Rome, it it, it is devastating. I, I mean I, I told him, I said, we only spend a few weeks on these special reports. I fly you guys all over the country, churn them out, and Jacobson's like, look, I want us to take extra time on this. I I want to put it all in there. I said, okay, go ahead. So this is a big one. PrisonPlanet.tv, 15 cents a day, five ninety five a month, get a yearly membership, uh, and get three months free on that. I got a bunch of cell phone news uh, coming up and a bunch of economic news, but I want to continue with your phone calls right now. These callers just bring up such incredible uh, information. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to – who's up next there, John? Dwayne in California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, nice to talk to you, brother. Nice to talk to you, my friend. Hey, I've been in InfoWars for about 10 years now, and I'm African-American here in Los Angeles, and I've been trying to figure out a way to wake up other folks and tell them what's going on. Uh, one of the problems I run into, though, is uh, some of the groups in this, inside the Patriot Movement uh, are seem to be a little racist, and it's kind of hard to me to, uh, to get people to move to that camp. Uh, where do you see black people fitting into the whole Patriot Movement, and how can we uh, eliminate some of those barriers so we can get more people into the fold? Well, I mean, here's the issue. The mainstream media advertises, I mean, the, the, it's such a complex question, uh, Dwayne. I mean, I could spend five hours just on this issue. In fact, I've, thought, I've talked about doing a film just on this issue. Um, everybody at some level is discriminatory. Uh, whether you want to, you know, marry somebody that looks like you just because that's what you're comfortable around. Black people, white people, it's all there statistically. People act the same. <laughs> I mean, I mean, humans are all the same. So there are always going to be black racist groups, white racist groups. You know, I call it tribalism because, well, the system knows that, so they also accentuate and push that. Now, I'm not going to say there aren't white folks that hate black people and vice versa, but how many white supremacist rallies where they also talk about how their anti-New World Order have turned out to be Fed-run. Not Fed-infiltrated, Fed-run. How many racist talk show hosts, as it turned out, are government agents are on the payroll? I've noticed this on my videos sometimes. Uh, you'll see somebody on the Obama deception, one version with 9 million views, right at 9 million views, of the 30-plus million of just on YouTube and Google of folks watching it. And they'll say, yeah, you know, look at this, blah, 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 talking about Obama and, you know, using uh, racial terms instead of going after Obama for being a globalist and a New World Order person. And to make a long story short here, because like I said, it's such a complex issue and, and to try to cover every angle. See, my problem is I don't just give sound bites. I like to get into deep meat and potatoes to really explain it for people because when I explain it, it's just common sense. People have already experienced this themselves. They're not learning anything from me. I'm pointing out what you already knew. But what I've noticed is with IP addresses on Infowars.com in the comments, uh, with uh, stuff on YouTube looking at their at their user pages, most of the people that run around 24-7 and are on 12-hour shifts going inward, 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 I love Alex Jones, let's kill the inwards, or vice versa, you can notice that they'll have two or three channels that have the same videos, the same terms, and it's the same person. Now, now I, I've suspected that on YouTube and, and seen some evidence of it. And I've checked their handle versus their MySpace and their Facebook and have confirmed their Pentagon, uh, CENTCOM, their ADL, Southern Poverty Law Center, affiliated people. Remember with Rand Paul, they caught him four separate times, Democratic operatives dressed up like hillbillies saying, I don't like black people. Uh, they've caught uh, people in uh, 
New Mexico saying get the black people. And you can look at them and tell they were little communists slash anarchist. It's an oxymoron, but that's what they say they are. Foundation funded. I mean, it's basically like in, in, in 2008, the police had to admit they attacked their own police in front of news cameras to attack the peaceful demonstrators at the DNC. Uh, the Royal Mounted Police got caught the same year in Canada at a North American Union summit, SPP summit. Uh, they've been caught in Seattle. They've been caught in London. They've been caught in, in uh, Genoa, Italy. It's the same thing. You go out, you do something bad to blame a group you don't like. Now, it is true going back 30, 40 years that if somebody's going to be a white supremacist, well, they're not going to care about talking about the New World Order either because they're politically incorrect. So th there are some real folks who want to be white separatist and got beat up by a mug by black folks once or whatever. So they don't like all black people, just like there are plenty of black people. I grew up in Dallas where I'd be on the weekend playing basketball, you know, with some of my black friends from the football team. And an old black man come out on his porch with a shotgun and said, look, honky, you get out of the neighborhood or I'm going to kill you. Now, now, that's happened to me repeatedly. I told my dad about it. And he said, well, maybe it's best you don't go down there. You know, I mean, uh, so so that's the whole issue. I don't then say, well, all black people want to kill me because some old black man said, look, look, you cracker honky. Get, you know, get the bleep out of here. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do something to you. And 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 uh, <laughs> I mean, you know. Then I don't run around and say all black people. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been racially attacked by black people in Dallas uh, several times, and, and I thought it was great. I mean, you know, uh, it gave me one hell of a fight. I'm a lot tougher person now today, uh, you know, uh, and, and so I mean, that's the end of it. And that's because the black folks feel like they've been put down. They've been put in a bad position. They've been abused, and so all white people are evil, so I deserve to be called racial names. Well, it's the same thing with black people, uh, with white people. Because, I mean, white racists don't sit there and think they're bad and hateful. They think all blacks are evil and, and are racist, and they deserve it. So, see, the black racist is looking back at the white racist, and they're basically the same person. They just got different melanin in their skin, and the system plays up on that. So a lot of it is hype in the liberty movement, but I've confirmed it in InfoWars and Prison Planet. And we have almost no moderation. We have stuff that can be flagged. Uh, we have a few folks at night, you know, one person at night, one person in the day. If they see stuff like kill this person, kill that person, because I don't want the cops showing up here, you know, we delete it. Uh, and if I see somebody saying inward, inward, inward over and over again, you know, we delete them because it's just spam. Just like if somebody's pitching their porn website, hey, go here for, you know, hot girls, we ban that IP address. But it's mainly just the super bad nuisances that we have to deal with. Now, then we also have WordPress problems, so sometimes I can't even post because the sites are so big and people think that's censorship. But the, the point is we made a study of the IP addresses, and nine times out of ten, the guy going inward, 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 kill all the blacks, and then, and, then, and there's another guy in there going, going, kill all the whites. They're devil people. It's the same guy, the same group of IP addresses because we'll ban them. They come right back. I don't know if they're white, black, Jewish, German, Chinese. Who knows? Could be a computer doing it. They admit the Pentagon has these, quote, sock puppet programs now that can do it. Uh, Israel admittedly has a thing called super megaphone where they've got hundreds of thousands of volunteers that go out, stir folks up. Uh, government admits they're doing it. Corporations admit they're doing it. I don't know if it's a person or what, but it's in there just inward, 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 inward. If we've got an article about Obama being bad, the, uh, this individual or, or computer or whatever it is or group goes in with the same IP address or the same area of IP addresses and wreaks havoc to, and, 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 and they'll wait on the articles. They'll wait till one goes live so they can try to control the argument. And most of them are not stalkers or lunatics or idiots. They are paid to do it. So my whole issue is if Newsweek, Time Magazine, CNN, Nightline, Rolling Stone, New York Magazine, anything else you can imagine, comes out and demonizes Alex Jones and tries to then mix in racial stuff to it, I mean, let's say white supremacist. We're running around saying, don't drink fluoride. It causes brain damage. Well, if you're black, who cares if they're telling you that? It's true. Uh, but uh, you notice the white supremacists aren't. 
In fact, if you really study the main white supremacist groups, because I would guess 98% are Fed run, we, and that's been proven over time that the most of them are, they spend more time on Alex Jones universally than they do attacking Benjamin Netanyahu. You'd think if the Jews are the ultimate devil in the universe that they would be attacking Benjamin Netanyahu if it's all run by him. No, almost no time on Israel. It's on Alex Jones. It's because I'm here covering issues, and regardless of what color you are, you should have farming and ranching rights. You should have family rights. You should have tax incentives for small business. You shouldn't be aborting your babies. Uh, you, you know, I'm here about life. I, I like life. And so, but at the same time, I don't have any guilt about racial stuff. Because in my life, I never did anything to a Mexican, nothing to a black person. And I've been racially attacked repeatedly by Mexicans, had my leg broken uh, for no reason. I've been racially attacked by black folks, but I don't then hate Mexicans because that happened. Now, when Mexicans are running around waving Mexican flags, I go, well, you're an idiot. Don't you want to be in America? It's better than Mexico. It ain't perfect. But if it's so good, why do you want this to be Mexico? You see, so at the same time, I'm not psychologically stunted in guilt uh, where, where, where I'm so sick of the fake guilt um, – I'm tempted sometimes as a psychological example to come in here wearing a Klan uniform and then tell black people, don't abort your babies. See, because then that would get probably 5 million views and would probably save 10,000 black children. And, and, and I'm not above uh, degradating myself to save human lives. I mean, and you say, why? how would that do that? Oh, I guarantee you'd get 5, 10 million views and black folks would actually watch it and not kill their babies. You see what I'm saying? Uh, that's why I dress up like a joker. If that's what it takes to expose Obama as a fraud, okay? See, see, as long as somebody comes to you as a liberal and tells you we want to ban folks calling you names and take their free speech, folks are like, good, abort my babies because you're my friend. You, you, you tell me you like me, you see? But, but, see, if I put a pair of sunglasses on right now, everybody on the YouTube videos later would, would, would marvel and ask me why I was wearing sunglasses. If I wore sunglasses for a three-hour show, every caller who was watching on the Internet would call and ask, why are you wearing sunglasses? Do you have a black eye? See, everybody's about surface stuff. And so the globalists come to you as liberals dressed up like hippies when, they're, when they are writing their thesis papers at universities about how you're black weeds and they want to kill you. But because they come to you with a lisping... NPR voice, you'll open your wrist up and say, drink my blood. You understand? I mean, I had a famous black nationalist down here a few months ago because I wanted to interview him for an upcoming film. And I said, don't you understand that abortion is about exterminating blacks? And he said, I don't care. I'm for it. And I go, well, you're not really then this black nationalist, are you? See, it's a sacrament to kill the black babies. Blacks think it's a, it's a right, just like whites do even though 52% of blacks were never born. So see, uh, 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 the average black person would get upset by somebody dressed up in a Klan outfit, even though they were saying sodium fluoride has, on average, four times the effect on blacks, for whatever reason, neurologically, as it does on whites. Those are in major studies. We've had doctors in to break it down. I may have to go into overdrive now. I'm running out of time here, and I've got important stuff I promised to cover. So you've got all that happening. See, I said I couldn't answer this slowly. So, is, so if somebody's in a hippie outfit with a black beret on, you're ready to kill your kids for them. But if somebody's wearing a Klan outfit but tried to give you a bag of gold, you wouldn't take it because it's all the surface. So the feds dress up in Klan outfits and dance around to demonize the First Amendment and Patriot and Tenth Amendment groups, hoping to fool people into then fighting with real patriots. It's all theater. Now, now, I've been ranting there, Dwayne. I hope that answered your question. Thank you very much. But, I mean, do you get my point about, about th that if somebody comes up dressed like a hippie, people will do whatever they say? But if they came dressed giving you a lottery ticket for $10 million and a Klan outfit, people wouldn't trust it, even though it's just an outfit. Do you see the feds can dress up in those outfits and then demonize whatever group they want? Do you understand that? No, I get it. I get it. I've been in InfoWars for 10 years. It's the other folks out there who are thick-headed who don't understand that I had to have you break it down for them. So I appreciate it. 
Well, I hope they wake up. I hope everybody wakes up because the government wants what they've done to black folks in this country with breaking up the family, telling the women, we'll give you money, but no man in the house. Uh, all of that on record was to destroy any type of continuity and strength. But, but, but they always beta test on a group that's a minority first before it goes to everybody else. So my issue is a rising tide does raise all ships. And black folks, white folks, polka dotted folks had better learn right now that Uncle Sam is not their friend because Uncle Sam is not Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam is a group of eugenics scientists that taught Hitler everything he knows. Do you see what I'm saying? I get it. People need to do the research, man. It's out there, brother. It's out there. They do. They need to do it right now. And people need to stop fighting with each other and obsessing over all this and, 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 and need to deal with the mega central banks. I appreciate your call. How am I ever going to get to all these calls? Habu, Chris, Tony, Sean. I've got all the cell phone news. Um, here's science news. Cell phones may affect brain uh, metabolic systems, cellular activity. This study says a 50-minute cell phone call. On the right side, they did brain scan images. Relations show heightened activity in the area of the brain, and it increased the temperature of the brain. I've seen other studies that say 15 minutes, but it all, it all matters. It's all based on how powerful that cell phone is. Uh, here's another one. Woozy from Wi-Fi. Electrosensitives say modern life makes them ill. And the studies are showing that's true. Cell phones and smart meters. We're going to break that down. Effects of cell phone radio frequency signal exposure on brain, glucose, uh, Metabolism. All this on the heels of the World Health Organization listing cell phones as cancer hazard. I will get more into cell phones tomorrow. I've already covered it some. Also, Fed's ready to print more funny money on QE3 rumors. Market strategists were on the verge of a great, great depression. That's MSNBC. Linked up on Infowars.com. It's happening. It's all been designed to consolidate wealth. It's all been planned. They've announced the world government. The system is out in the open. It's time to stop living in denial. Government lies even when it would be better for them to tell the truth because it's their nature. And they don't ever want to get in the habit of telling the truth. So why do we trust them? It's just that simple. They knew cell phones caused massive brain tumors. And they approved it back in the late 70s. They know what they're doing. They know what all this Wi-Fi and all this frequency pollution is doing. They're conscious of it. The globalist, the Queen of England and others, I've seen mainline documentaries on them. They allow none of this in their palaces. None of this. Everything they eat is organic. Everything they drink is purified water. They're obsessed with it while they own the companies that are approving all of this. We're all in this together, and we've got to wake up to it. Habu in Wisconsin, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you so much for this great opportunity. I'll be pithy. And just two quick points. Uh, one, um, you know, it's so interesting that the cell phone uh, um, report came out now. And this was uh, obviously, they knew, as you said, they knew about th these kinds of things going on, but they waited till the population is so dependent on cell phones, and then they come out with this kind of... Um, equivocation, oh, but if you use it this way or that way, as if, you know, yes, it's bad, but you can still get, a, get by with using it. And so it, it's all designed, as you said. And the second thing, you know, I had a discussion with a, um, a station manager, I mentioned your name, and he said, oh, the, the conspiracy theorist. And I took, him to, uh, I took him to task on that. I said, what do you mean conspiracy theorist? I said, and, and precisely what is happening, which is what you point out, is that these are giant conspiracies that a mainline a media just dismisses as a conspiracy theorist. But these are actually happening like Pat Tillman, et cetera, et cetera, including the economy in numbers, as Gerald Salente has said. So that is all. And I wish you all the very best in your new ventures because it, it's so in, important to reach the people and have a complete change coming up uh, next year. Well, Habu, I mean, I mean, how did this end? I mean, 90 plus percent of what we talk about I mean, I've been telling people for 15, 16 years on air that cell phones cause brain tumors because I had the studies. I, I wasn't just saying that. I've been telling people for 16 years that blood is taken from all babies at birth secretly 
declassified two years ago, 14 years after I got documents and exposed it. I said they would implode the economy and uh, announce a new bank of the world. They've now done that. Uh, I, I mean, it goes on and on and on. I mean, we're not making any of this up. I mean, most of this stuff is out in the open now. I mean, what did he say to that? Uh, you, you know, he gave me this typical liberal answer. <laughs> he was uh, from a liberal uh, radio station, and he gave me this answer about uh, uh, about uh, oh, the conspiracy theories. And, you know, that is a way that the mainstream media uh, just dismisses something that's very real, and, and, and most people don't have the time to look at it as you have in depth and completely deconstructed it. Uh, thank you for your call. You're absolutely right. I'm actually going to shoot a video inspired by one that I saw Change the Channel do on YouTube. It, it, it's points I've made. It's a universal truth. That when they say, oh, there's all these conspiracy theories about the bin Laden killing. No, that means questions. We don't believe you anymore. You've been caught lying over and over again. Why should we believe you? I mean, look, Obama said we'd be there a couple days in Libya. Now we're three months into it. Is it a conspiracy theory to not believe them? Questioning is a conspiracy theory. Back in one minute. We're coming back. We agree with everything I say, folks, even though you can go check out 90 plus percent of what I'm covering for yourself, which just admitted. But for heaven's sakes, question government, question mainstream media, question alternative media, question everything. And if questioning is a conspiracy theory or saying that powerful people get together and try to expand their power and do it through government, to say that's a conspiracy theory is the height of ignorance, or if you're lying, if you're in the establishment, uh, the height of propaganda. Chris in Louisiana, thanks for holding. You're on the air. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, I just wanted to say, man, I'm a 40-year-old father of two beautiful boys, five-year-old and a three-year-old. And uh, what bothers me most, man, I could talk about everything going on in the world. I listen to you every day. Um, but it's like... Uh, what matters most to me is like uh, food, shelter, and protection, right? And they're just stripping all those away with the, the Indiana Supreme Court saying they can come anytime with or without any reason to come in that destroys the Fourth Amendment. Then I can't protect myself, right, to bear arms now, slaughtering the Second Amendment. And then the food thing, it's like... Uh, just getting really dire in this. Uh, and first they uh, say the, 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 the principal can't say a prayer at graduation. Now you can't get up there as valedictorian. The judges are ruling and say, I want to thank God. And you can have whatever other free speech you want, but now you don't have your free speech because you go to a government school. That is ridiculous. And they know it's a fraud. I just want to have my house for my family and my food and be able to protect them in the most basic, rudimentary, human kind of way. And I feel like uh, the, that's hard to do these days, you know? Well, that's what the Founding Fathers got angry about. And they petitioned and they begged and they rallied. And the Redcoats said, we're going to start searching your houses without warrants. And we're coming to get your guns. And you know what happened. So, Chris, we've got to wake up as many people as we can as we go into these dangerous waters. Uh, because history is being made right now, and I understand what it's like to have children and to look into their innocent eyes and to only want to protect them. And that's why I don't have any fear of these globalists. That's why I'm not worried about what happens to my name, my body, any of it, because it's not just my children, it's every other child. There isn't one of us out there that's got our head screwed on straight that wouldn't give our life, not just for our own children, but for somebody else's child. And it's that type of instinct that builds civilization. This backstabbing, yuppie attitude of giggling at everything and being passive, that destroys civilization and lets criminal wolves come in and take over. Tony in Alabama, you're on the air. Go ahead. I just appreciate you taking my call. Um, the reason I'm calling today uh, is to talk about the uh, police-style state bill being voted on this week in the Alabama State Senate. And it really hits home to me because I am a state constable and uh, also part of the Ron Paul meetup group. And uh, we also watch bills up in Montgomery uh, with an organization called Be Somebody Mobile. And we'll go up there and we'll watch these bills as they go through. And a couple of weeks ago, we were up there in committee watching this particular bill going through. It's a texting while driving bill. And what that 
me really concerned about No, they got the same one in Texas. They say that they're going to grab your phone now, download the info, to, they, they, that if you receive a text, I know tech, that you'll be charged with it. And now all I have a CNN article everywhere, the, the government saying anything on your phone is theirs. Well, that's your computer. Sorry, go ahead. Is that what it is? Yeah, no, that's, it's a texting while driving, Bill. It's coming in, you know, to kind of fool people and believing this thing's going to be, you know, for their safety. But we examine the bill, and it actually does not forbid a driver from reading his, uh, his phone, his text. It, they can play games on their phone while they're driving. That's not going to, uh, you know, uh, they also allow them to use maps. And the most important thing is they can't, uh, this bill does not cover uh, if you're, actually dialing a number while you're driving. This, this is too is important. Is more overdrive straight ahead. Stay there. We're going to do one more segment of live overdrive for uh, Tony and then Sean in Australia and David in Oklahoma. That'll be it because we've got so much other key information coming up dealing with the attack and the retransmission on the First Amendment. But I want to talk about this uh, texting bill. I'm going to dig out my CNN. Right, here is a CNN headline. We're going back to your calls. But the last caller raised the fact that all over the country they're trying to pass texting bills. And, and look, it is dangerous. And many studies show it's three times more dangerous to be texting while driving than drinking while driving. I mean, it's dangerous just to get a text and look at it. Uh, but here's a CNN headline. Warrantless cell phone searches spread to more states. And what happens is they arrest you for unpaid parking tickets uh, or in Michigan, they just pull you over for speeding. They grab your cell phone, plug it into an extractor. They also have wireless systems that can do this. The, the feds do. And it downloads photos, videos, text, call log, voicemail, calendar items. And it all goes into a database. And CNN reports it like it's a good thing. And that now when you get arrested and are in the back of the squad car, including for unpaid tickets... They go ahead and take your phone. I mean, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, your phone is your computer. Your phone has everything on you about it, especially if it's the smartphone. And now even the cheap phones are becoming smartphones. They're already surveilling you without warrants. It says, think about all the data, photos, video, text messages, calendar items, apps, call log, voicemail, email on your cell phone right now. If you're arrested, could the police search your cell phone and would they need a warrant? That depends on which state you're in. In California, it's legal for police to search an arrestee's cell phone without a warrant. You hear that? For any arrest. Ever since a January decision by the California Supreme Court, California civil rights advocates are pushing back. The Electronic Frontier Foundation, great folks, are supporting a California Assembly Bill, SB 914, which would require police in the state to get a warrant before searching an arrestee's cell phone. It'd be one thing if you had probable cause arrested somebody for a dead body in the back of the car. Clearly, you want to know if the person's got more bodies at their house or, or people kidnapped. There's no warrant needed. Probable cause. Search that sucker right there. But to grab a phone, and it goes on to admit Michigan, anybody pulled over does this. They grab your phone, plug it in. Within seconds, it grabs. Within seconds, it breaks in. Within a minute, it grabs everything. And they go, have a nice day, thanks for all your info, then that's put into big data hoppers. Well, why shouldn't the local cops do that? The feds are already running basically everything through these NSA hubs, which, again, they denied a few years ago they did, now they admit. And the whole cybersecurity system has got the Pentagon with the, uh, more hubs uh, going in to go through everybody's data. Uh, so going back to the caller, uh, the caller uh, is a constable, Tony uh, in Alabama, and we'll t talk to a few other callers, and he, he was getting to a bill, a texting bill, and talking about it being horrible, and he hadn't gotten to why it was horrible. I haven't read the Texas bill, but I heard them reading sections of it on local talk radio yesterday on 590 AM in the morning, and, and they were reading sections saying that even if you receive a text, uh, that the cop now without a warrant We'll go through and see that you got a text then and then that you'll get a ticket for that. And then it's going to be a thousand dollars in Austin and only 200 outside Austin. Very bizarre. So it'll vary area to area. But again, I haven't researched it yet. I just for 30 minutes heard them talking about it. Uh, I don't know about this Alabama bill. Tony, w w uh, you say you're up at the state house as a constable watching all this. What is your concern with the Alabama bill? 
Well, my concern is this. It's, I think it's just a way of, of, of abusing police power. In the bill, you know, they're, they're trying to push it as a safety bill, but it actually um, it does, it does not forbid a driver from reading their text while driving or playing on the phone or anything like that. It just so lets the cop gotta, get into the phone. Yeah, you got to ask yourself, okay, if, the, if, police, if this thing passes, if a policeman sees you just touching your phone, basically, because it doesn't forbid, the guy stood up there in committee and said, hey, you can dial your phone, you can call, that's fine, this bill does not, you know, not let you do that. You can, you can uh, use your, your, your map service on your phone. But my concern is when I stood up, you know, I was talking to some of the senators and I said, listen, how is a police officer like myself supposed to know the difference between you dialing somebody, dialing home to tell your wife you're coming home early or to pick up some milk or something, or texting? And, and they just look at you like you're just stupid. That was a stupid question. And I'm like, well, as a constable, I couldn't tell the difference. And you're expecting me to enforce a law that's unenforceable. And so I even uh, talked with some of the senators afterwards. And what really got me bad was one of the senators, uh, uh, when I was talking to him, he says, well, why are you so opposed to this unenforceable law? Why can't we just pass this law? And I, I said, let me turn that around for you. Why are you trying to pass a law that's unenforceable? What is? What are you trying to get to, and why are you wanting to stop people? Because we're we're here in Mobile. We get stopped at every holiday for no reason down the street. We're really fed up with it. With these police stop, you know these these where they stop you and make sure you prove that you have insurance. They're 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 basically saying you're guilty until you prove to us that you have this insurance. And now they're they're trying to start this bill. So I'm just telling everybody now. I, I appreciate you taking my call. If they can call the state house, they're in Alabama and they're listening to this. It has not passed yet, but it has passed committee, and it will be up for vote this week. What do you think about all these states pulling people over, not even arresting them? Some states, like Michigan, they pull you over for speeding and they grab your phone. This is on record, and plug it into a machine that sucks everything out of it. Yeah, I, I think that's that's terrible. I mean, that's going beyond... You know, the police is a state constable, and half the state loves us, okay? Most all your rural areas where we're, we're helping people, they love us. Some of your cities in, in Alabama, well, we're infringing on what they're trying to do in their corporate police, you know. And, and I'm not putting down the local police here. I, I, I work with some of them. And, well, let me ask you a question. How like, did we have giant cities with a half million, million people 100 years ago with only sheriffs and constables? Because you only got a sheriff or constable when something really serious was going on, everybody else had guns, and people were afraid to break in or rob folks because they would get shot. As we get more and more police, you notice the crime rate doesn't go down because most of the cops are busy revenue generating. That's what I think this bill is, is really trying to do because the, the, the penalties for this is not $1,000. They're going to nickel and dime people to death so they don't go downtown, they don't fight it, and uh, they're, they're getting $25, $50. You know, these are the type fines. They're just revenue generators. And um, another thing, the state constable is an elected position, too. So if I don't do my job, I lose my job. No, I hear you. It's good to hear from you, Tony. Another good uh, uh, peace officer out there. Of course, again, elected. That's what you want. You're, you want your police elected. <laughs> of course, the founding fathers had it wrong, though. We want to just have them do whatever they want, running wild. I don't know what to do about the texting issue. I think there needs to be serious local penalties uh, if it is confirmed you're doing it for reckless driving. And let me tell you how you know reckless driving. A month ago, I went down to Port Aransas to go fishing for the weekend. And there was this going over the causeway uh, out to Mustang Island. There was this giant gas truck. It had natural gas in it swerving in and out of the two lanes. And I, I said, that guy's drunk. I said, the wind isn't high. And my wife's like, get around him, get away from him. And it was this big 18-wheeler swerving in and out of the lane. And I did call call on him because that's not tattletailing. That's exposing a serious danger. And I didn't call the police. I called, uh, normally they have a phone number. It didn't have a phone number. It had the name of the gas company and the truck number. But let, let me finish the story, though. I drove around him to get away, and he almost hit me again. I mean, he was all over the road. I'd say he was coming three feet the other side, and then once we drove past him, he was driving violently. And I called him, and I said, here's the truck number. He's going over the causeway, you know, towards Mustang Island, Port Aransas. But when we drove by him, with him swerving out of the lane, he was watching a video or texting. I don't know what he was doing. 
He had the smartphone, looked like an iPhone, in front of his face. This guy was driving a truck that's a giant bomb with it in his face. It's one thing if you get a message and you, you know, look over real quick, but see, that leads to more danger. That's how it starts, so I guess it isn't good. He's swerving all over the road with his gas truck, and when we drive by him, bigger than Dallas, he's got it in front of his face. I mean, two inches, like he was nearsighted or something, looking at the phone. So I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what that lunatic was doing. But, I mean, he was all over the road, worse than any drunk driver in a giant gas truck. And I did call the number on him. And uh, I'm not one of these folks that, you know, gravel's coming out of a truck, so I call and tattle on them for not having a tarp down, or they swerve a little, or they, or they get on my tail or something. I just ignore it. But let me tell you, this guy was... Out of his mind. All right, now I'm out of time again. Uh, Sean in Australia, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, you going, mate? Um, uh, Alex, are you there, mate? Yes, I am. we got about a minute and a half. Yeah, no worries, mate. I'm a member of the Jin Jin Property Group here in Western Australia, and I um, I listened to that bloke talking the other day from Perth, and I just wanted to tell you, mate, I was a meeting the other day, and... Um, there were dozens of farmers there who have just been totally destroyed by these UN laws, mate. And um, now, now, that's been on uh, Australian TV, but is it right that half the farming land has been laid off use, pe the land people own, uh, for the carbon tax? A good mate of mine had, they wanted to take his whole property and turn it into a park. He, bought, he pays his, you know, um, uh, payments to the bank for his property, they're going to take um, his whole land. And he fought it, and they only ended up taking 10 acres off him. So he was lucky. You know, he got away with losing 10 acres. But I was just going to say, um, the reason... Look, oh, that bloke the other day from uh, Western Australia, the Sean bloke, he didn't know about the farming situation. And it's like that in Australia. Our media is so bad that um, people are just not told. And... Um, I myself wrote a, um, went to the Jinjin Property Group meeting where all these great Australians were speaking who had been fighting this, these horrible UN laws for years. And, um, um, you know, there was no media there. So I had to write a letter to all the local papers and um, uh, myself. Uh, and so the people just are not told, mate. Um, well, listen, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put you on hold. And, and, and get your name and number. Uh, and uh, you say you're, are you a farmer or you went to the farmer meeting? Uh, well, no, I'm not a farmer, but my family have always been farmers. Yeah, well, we need to get some farmers on. Uh, give us your name and number. Recommend some for us.